Добрый вечер. Good evening. Uh, welcome to the next panel of the Freedom Games, this year's Freedom Games. We are very happy that we could organize the Freedom Games during the pandemic. Uh, we have a connection with uh, our uh, guests using internet and we are going to discuss the divided community. Thank you for accepting our invitation. Uh, Katarzyna de Lazari Radek, uh, a philosopher and ethicist of the University of Łódź is with us. Professor Tadeusz Gadacz, who is a philosopher of the um, Academy, uh, University of uh, Mining uh, uh, in uh, Kraków, and Michał Wawrykiewicz, who is a lawyer and co-founder of the uh, Free Courts Wolness on the Initiative. When I was inviting you to take part in this discussion, uh, I was thinking of a different divided community. It was before the protests. It was before the storm that uh, occurred on the 11th of November. So I would like to start uh, from the story, which used to be quite important uh, to me, and which has contributed uh, to asking this question. You must uh, uh, remember the movie A Man of Iron. There is this uh, scene where Maciek Tomczyk is uh, lighting a candle on the viaduct uh, where his father was killed uh, in a moment uh, later an August agreement was signed and he said, I know that we will never allow us to be divided. We will not allow them to cheat us, cheat us. We have seen, we have seen this truth and now we will never forget it. Well, uh, the August uh, agreements, the moment of great joy and optimism when we started uh, considering democracy, when we have discovered our freedom and uh, people started believing in something. And today, Poland is divided and not in a positive meaning uh, uh, concerning our diversity, but we have allowed them to divide them and uh, we have lost uh, this truth in a way. So I wanted to ask you what has really happened? Uh, why it has come to this division? Why are we talking about two Polands or even three uh, Polands, uh, as Professor de Barbara is saying? <laughs> Professor, Professor Gadacz. Uh, well, I'm going back to the times of solidarity. You have reminded us of this very important period. This division was quite clear. On the one hand, it was them, the government, communists. And on the other side, there was the opposition, workers, intelligentsia, that has joined the strike of solidarity. The church was also on this good side. So uh, the boundary was very clear. In a sense, it has frozen different, uh, different uh, other um, differences that have uh, uh, been noticed by us later on. Polish people are masters uh, when it is uh, when uh, there is there is a threat. I remember that uh, during the strike, Krakow uh, public transport was not operating. Private cars were taking passengers. People were supporting one another. So when somebody wanted to get a lift. Uh, People were stopping their cars, but now it's different. If I were to make a diagnosis, I must say that something has happened in Europe in general. On the one hand, Europe starts bursting. Uh, Europe was culturally culturally diverse. If we consider Belgium, which uh, has always been subdivided into different nations, in Spain there are different nations too. Italy was always aware of the differences between the north and the south. 
only in the European Union when it started developing. This bursting started. Belgians could not uh, develop their government. Catalans wanted to be free. They wanted to be politically independent. Maybe it's an effect of rivalry which took place and some threats have appeared. Uh, romantic threats, we may say. So in order to understand the situation, uh, we should really go back to uh, rom romanticism. So from the time of enlightenment, from the processes of civilization when Kant was dreaming uh, uh, of, of civil society, and all of, all of a sudden the the, the, the mind uh, uh, is overtaken by emotion, then Italy uh, is becoming independent, France be is becoming independent, and maybe this is one of the reasons for the current situation. On the one hand, we've got supporters of the civilized society, open and global society, and on the other hand, we've got these new neo roman, -roman who are dreaming of this closed society. So I would like to remind, to remind of the Bergson diagnosis. He has subdivided societies into open and closed ones. It's, um, it, maybe this can um, uh, explain this, this, this burst. So uh, we are talking about bondages in the local communities where everybody in the community uh, is important. The, identi the identity is uh, really not based uh, on, on the threats. So this is an introduction from me. I think I would like to add some comments. I would like to ask the same question to um, Dr. Katarzyna de Lazari Radek. Radek. So I'm just uh, wondering whether during this transformation, maybe initially, uh, we were really too happy, overexcited about the freedom. But maybe later on, there was a time that all of a sudden uh, our morales uh, became uh, lower. Maybe we have just uh, decided that freedom, freedom is something that we should take for granted. I think you are right. We have uh, become used to freedom, and I think it's quite good. But I also think that the protest, uh, protest of women, this, pro this protest is an ongoing process. It demonstra demonstrates that this value, the freedom, is still very important to us. It's, it's really of the utmost uh, importance. This protest also shows an optimistic side of our nature. I was listening to what Professor was saying, and uh, I have to agree uh, the mind has been overtaken by emotions, and politicians use these uh, emotions. But I think that the optimistic message is that at the level of our mind, at the level of, uh, of our rights, when we are talking to our opponents, really there are no major differences. Women's protests show that in terms of the values, most of Poles agree. This means that we are ready to become unified. We have a common target. And we will accomplish uh, uh, an understanding, an agreement. So to me, it has been quite surprising, but also very optimistic. I would like to say that when I'm talking to my students who have different views, during the lessons, we are always uh, uh, ready to come to terms. The reason takes the pre precede precedence, not the emotions. We can always uh, reach the consensus. When I am talking uh, with people who live uh, in Podkarpacie, when, for instance, we go there for summer holidays, we go there and we discuss politics, LGBT, women's rights, and there is uh, this agreement. 
So if uh, we can uh, manage our emotions and we will not allow politicians to use our emo emotions in such a nasty way, uh, it will be still possible to reach this agreement, this consensus. Uh, and another version of the same question, uh, Professor uh, and uh, Dr. Lazari uh, were saying about our freedom. I'm afraid uh, that we are focused at the times when uh, the freedom is in danger. We are better, we are stronger in terms of this negative freedom. This is when we actually uh, notice this freedom uh, from uh, enforcement. Uh, and this happens when we are under threat, when we feel that our rights uh, can uh, be uh, limited. And it, here is my question, how much freedom in these rights? Uh, Mr. Wawrinkiewicz, what has happened uh, to the freedom? How did the protests about court start? Uh, start? Uh, it, they probably started because there was a threat to a freedom, right? We started uh, from Birkut and we were saying that we will never allow them to divide us. So I would like to start uh, by referring to these hi historical moments uh, when uh, the society, the traditional community is becoming unified uh, 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 around uh, a specific idea uh, after some terrible experience. This is what happened in 1918. This also happened after the communist era has ended. In 2017, when the protests, the social protests concerning courts uh, started, I had this feeling, uh, I was remembering, I remembered uh, uh, the solidarity time of the year 1989. So that was the moment of the social integration based on common wonderful values. This uh, often happens in these uh, important historical moments. This is when uh, Poles have these wonderful features as the uh, society. But then uh, this, th these uh, divisions in our community. Now we are divided into two Polands, and this gap is really so huge that it will be hard to get rid of it. But if we uh, if we look, if we date back uh, to the year 1918, uh, not so long ago there was an interview with uh, Mr. Michnik, and he was talking about the and that's and Piłsudski's uh, Poland's, uh, which was star which started in 1920s, 30s. This division has actually persevered. Uh, it was present during the communist time. We had the nationalist uh, bloc, and there was also a more liberal bloc. Even communists uh, included uh, Andesia and uh, supporters of Piłsudski uh, movement. So we keep experiencing this uh, division. Uh, when I'm thinking about the community and the division, uh, now uh, we are member st state in the European Union, which is a great uh, system in terms of values, culture, economy. I wonder whether uh, there is this idea, traditional uh, uh, idea of States that are subdivided by borders. Probably uh, uh, this division is quite archaic. So it started uh, with the community of ideas, of uh, our aspirations, uh, moral um, standards, legal standards, standards we aspire. Before, uh, we started the era of the current ruling party. I used to be a traditional patriot, a romantic patriot, but 
Uh, I all the time, uh, I, but the paradigm has uh, re, re, I have re, redefined this uh, paradigm throughout the last five years. I visited Luxembourg, uh, Brussels, uh, uh, while fighting for the free uh, court. So I was meeting Belgian, French, German lawyers. And they share uh, my values. M most of them uh, feel that they are the same values that are important to them. So uh, I have more. Uh, uh, I, I I share the same values uh, with these foreign lawyers, but I do not share the same values with the hooligans who are throwing uh, stones and who use slogans that are completely against my values. I also do feel we change and we turn uh, turn to turn to specific uh, values. While I'm listening to many of the conversations during the Freedom Games, I can see that uh, certain values uh, are. Uh, Mm, revealed when we mention these values uh, the 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 term national has emerged uh, the, this has uh, become uh, the source of division let's use the right that uh, ch chatterboxing talking has uh, beca has become um, a kind of dialect used by politicians it's like uh, jargon used by politicians even if we would like to have the right to to it we are deprived of the right because of uh, other terms that are applied to anybody who does not stick close to the to the ruling party i would like to ask ms uh, delazari uh, how come what about this this national jargon I look at us humans as uh, from the evolutional point of view, how we evolved and what we need uh, to live. It seems that one of the aspects I observed in my kids is the sense or the need to belong. We want to feel somebody. First, we belong to a family, then we love our city, our town, our country. These are the first emotions which we experience. I, th this is nothing strange that we come back to this uh, uh, community and we think that my community, our community is better. However, it seems that as we grow, as we discover the world, as we meet new people, we learn that we do not differ so much, especially in reference to fundamental uh, issues. And the nation is not a natural structure, but an imposed structure. But we share common language, we grow within the same culture, we visit uh, places which we start uh, liking because of some circumstances. I think that the process of growing and perceiving ourselves uh, in our world and in our country can take a broader perspective. I think that education, conversation, coming back to reasonable, sensible thinking and the global world should help us. I deal with uh, climate change ethics. And this is the best argument which I can use when I say there is common air for, for the whole earth. It has no borders. So we should uh, look after one another regardless of the language we use and what country we live in. 
Again, I'm smiling to the concept of language because what I would like to add to the question then uh, that goes to the professor would refer to whether we are not entwined in this chatting, that we talk because we want to cover the void. The, the talking is completely uh, indifferent for the truth. What do you think, Professor? You're partly right and partly, partly wrong. The classic notion of the nation where nationalism is rooted, we heard once that only the German nation is able to uh, to, to maintain European integrity. Then Heidegger claimed that only uh, Germany is able to complete uh, the the work of uh, destruction of metaphysics. And now coming back to the national categories because of our historical experiences, uh, seems safe. I agree with uh, Mr. Wawrykiewicz. I like the concept of open uh, society. These divisions uh, do not fall within specific nations, but within specific uh, concepts. Both uh, the MPs of the ruling party, the Lauren Lauren Justice, find partners in uh, for their conversations in, in other countries. So the flow of communities goes uh, into different directions. Talking about national categories is dangerous because what, in my opinion, impedes social dialogue in Poland and the fact why we are not able to communicate is because instead of talking about specific social problems, uh, about uh, politics, uh, we have tremendous problems with education, uh, educational policy, economic policy, health policy. The authorities have uh, turned to building the new mythological concept of Poland. There is a new hero, uh, new elites, and mythology is based on faith, on beliefs, and we must not uh, undermine it or discuss with that. We can talk about where to buy where to buy ventilators, or where to uh, buy vaccines. Uh, these are specific problems, but we must not uh, uh, t talk, uh, talk about, we must not forget to talk about it. We have uh, the famous uh, uh, t trench, the famous excavation uh, carried out for uh, many years uh, at um, uh, the Vistula Spit. We hear about great Poland, uh, but I think we need to remember the economic price, whether it's beneficial. If we don't go down to the level of what was called procurement and not the imperial policy, which is limited to the statement, I rule here, I am in power here. This is the kind of uh, po politics which does not accept dialogue unless there is a, a breakthrough. And we understand that this is not about building a national myth, but creating conditions for everybody to feel safe, to feel at home, uh, the dialogue will not be possible. I do uh, rely on young people, and I hope that perhaps the women's strike will give birth to new solidarity, which will help us live in, an, in a normal country. I think this is going the uh, right uh, direction, but we still have this 
terrible uh, narrative uh, related to our society. Alex Muller used to say that the myth cannot be built on a compromise, not in, in our culture, not in our uh, geographical location. In order to build a, a national myth, we need uh, specific uh, facts. So the myth about uh, the revolution dreamt over was solidarity. So I'm coming back to these hard facts. In reference to the facts that you uh, recalled, would you uh, find the way out? Would you find uh, hope in it, what we see in the streets? I can see great opportunity in it, in the context of the traditional ideological and political division that has lasted for 100 years, I can see a great opportunity to, 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 to demolish uh, the pattern that uh, has been binding us for 100 years. Looking at the young people in the streets and their perception of reality, their perception of the political uh, conflict, uh, the uh, occupation of our system and our minds, as I call it, they have a completely different approach. What functions, regardless of, uh, of, of, the, of the colors of the political party, is uh, obsolete. Is um, they, they want to feel the young generation of the 21st century. They want to move forward and be a modern society with no national connotations. This is a beautiful thing that among the young people there is no there are no negative um, links. There is a group of young people with conservative traditional uh, nationalist connotations. However, I think this is a minority because uh, a big part of young society is completely different than young people in my generation. They are forward thinking people. There is no they are not so strongly rooted or anchored in the past. They look ahead, they look forward without any historical uh, complexes as uh, in reference to their colleagues from the rest of the Europe or the Western world. I perceive it as, as beautiful, positive, and as our future, the community that uh, is supposed to be uh, built on the new grounds, new foundations, must not be mechanical uh, community. It was mentioned in the 19th century by Berhardt, it must be the community or solidarity, which is organic, based on an individual thinking, uh, creativity. Such a community can be built nowadays, and it must not be enclosed within a country's border, uh, within a country's borders. People need to feel the sense of community with the world. So answering your question, yes, I do uh, see the future, future in bright colors. Professor, redefining the community. Yesterday, I had the opportunity to talk uh, to Professor Timothy Garton Ash. He mentioned that uh, when we talk about non liberal democracy or hybrid uh, systems or uh, various paths that are supposed to mark our uh, future itinerary. He, the professor mentioned that after uh, the transformation in Poland, Polish liberals forgot the community. 
perhaps the notion of community, not a, not a nation, but a community can be the, the, the way to take us to, uh, to better life close to one another and better life among others and with others. Professor, what would you say? Do you perceive it as an opportunity? Yes, I do agree with you. This uh, term, this notion, which was very important even in the 20th century, many uh, phenomenologists were dealing with uh, community. Hildebrandt uh, wrote uh, The Physics of uh, Community. Edith Stein uh, was also dealing with community as a social bond, not a, a community which is mechanical or imposed by a vision of a national mythology. It is worth uh, remembering the difference uh, emphasized by um, Professor Tischner. He used to say that Poland used to be a multi-nation homeland. This is the place where we are born, not the place. This is the place where we come from, the nature, the environment, local community, where, where I live, with whom I cooperate. I'm open to other communities in Europe and worldwide. The sense of nation uh, meant, as in Romanticism, should be gone. We are Poles. We belong in here, but the sense of uh, community is real. The sense of nation is imaginary. What is real helps us uh, develop uh, locally, helps the local community to fight for its rights, to create friendly places to live. I, perce I perceive certain hope in different uh, urban movements in Poland, people uh, and different uh, groups, different local communities are involved. Only then can we build a community as such. Understanding uh, a community is right because Personalism says that a human is not an identity who can live only within a group of people or an individual that has to be separated from others, but is something in between. This is an uh, individual which uh, enjoys the sense of freedom and being separate, but remembers that they live in a society. They establish and determine the borders or the limits of uh, uh, living in the community. So nobody should tell us how to live uh, in order to be described as a real pole. The notion of the, of the real or genuine pole is something that uh, um, is painful for most of us. However, I would like to stick to the community because it sounds uh, more uh, optimistic. The uh, community is going beyond uh, our national uh, concept. In order for us to get united, to understand, and not only to 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 talk to one another, but to uh, discuss. How can we look for the, uh, to the, to, to the voice of sensibility should be searched for uh, outside Poland? Perhaps this would help us uh, stick together as the community. I think that the key to build our uh, community here in Poland, uh, something that will help us uh, talk to one another and not to shout, this is about all about education. And education 
has been neglected for the last 30 years. And this is what uh, has become evident within the last five years. Uh, people are susceptible to populism. They don't know the mechanisms of uh, this state system fun functioning, why uh, constitutional bodies are so important. A few years ago, nobody really knew what the Supreme Court of Justice is for or a constitutional tribunal is for. We only, uh, the majority of uh, majority of us had uh, uh, a really quick course on it. The need for education must not be um, executed via NG or by NGOs, uh, such as the initiative Constitutional Week, which uh, reaches uh, thousands of children all over Poland. This should be uh, a program implemented by the state uh, in the whole country that will bring the expected events, effects within uh, a short period of time. Should we go beyond our country borders to look for um, the models? In uh, um, the area which I represent, uh, we are looking for some uh, benchmarks, models uh, in the EU institutions. This is the, our uh, this is our anchor uh, of the uh, rule of law. We find it in Brussels, in the European Parliament, in Luxembourg, in the EU Court of Justice. Let me remind you that only the uh, se sentences of the EU Court of Justice have been uh, the compass for us to know what fits the uh, Western European uh, standards in relation to the functioning of the state and the rule of law. In the future, we will have to build our local community, our Polish community, based on West, Western European standards. And I would like to believe that we have uh, always belonged uh, to it. I hope we will belong to it. And we must not. Uh, encapsulate ourselves within uh, the limits of our country, not to breathe with the stiff air, but to stay in the pan Europe, within the pan-European uh, wind, taking advantage of uh, everything that the European community uh, can offer to us. You have mentioned the term beyond the borders. So uh, just to spend our last five minutes, I would like to uh, ask uh, Dr. Lazare Radek uh, uh, about the past. I will go back uh, several years. I'm an ethicist, uh, and uh, I would like to know the solution. George Washington, when he was 14 or 16, he translated the rules of civil civility uh, from French. It covers 110 uh, rules. Uh, we could follow the rules under the ethics, ethics uh, of the government or the public life. So maybe this is an idea. We should start from honesty. Honesty is uh, behaving without taking sides. It should be under the patronage of responsibility. And in any, any actions, we should be transparent. The, the fee, this should be the field that would be important for any place we reach. So any uh, public service. And something we are really missing in our politics and something we should learn, it's being kind, polite, being kind and polite to one another. I think that when I when uh, I'm looking at the women's protests, I can find these rules. There are many slogans. Not everybody uh, likes uh, these slogans, but I can see openness, uh, uh, openness towards uh, 
freedom, being responsible for ourselves. And when, uh, it, for, for instance, when we see someone who says, I'm here for my grandchildren, or somebody says, I'm here for the children I still haven't got. So people can be really lovely to one another. So maybe this is a way to, to, to become a unified nation. How do you think, Dr. Lazari? Uh, Radek. Okay, uh, I would like to uh, contribute an optimistic comment. I believe that no human uh, being is uh, evil by nature, that everybody wants to be helpful and everybody needs uh, another uh, person to have a good and uh, complete life. People also uh, look for uh, rescue in another human being, in uh, in somebody who has feelings. And I'm also a hedonist. Uh, we are also awarded by our brain when we help other people. So when we help others, we feel better, we feel uh, happier. So I could, I would like to appeal to you, uh, let us help one another. But I would like to add another thing. The division into something that is moral and something that is of state characteristic is quite important. You have mentioned the strike. It is a form of uh, our private lives. Of course, uh, we operate in a state and we oppose the state, but this is a bottom-up approach. I would like to say something about uh, the role of the state. Minister Emilevich recently said that the aim of the government is to increase uh, the, the good. And uh, well, I have to disagree with this. The state should provide security to the citizens to make sure that the citizens can search for the good and to have good uh, and happy life. I don't think it's the, the aim of the state or the government uh, to, to, to try to, to, to get this morality. Yeah, I fully agree with you. And uh, the final thought I would like to share with you. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation. I do hope that uh, we, there will be more opportunities to talk. But the last rule of politeness, of kindness, work to keep this spark uh, burning, the spark of godly uh, fire, which is our conscience. I think that this will lead us to be good. And once we learn how to be good, uh, we won't allow the governments, the authorities, to take it away uh, from us. And then we will get rid of uh, these uh, divisions and we will be able to speak calmly without screaming and shouting. Thank you warmly for taking part in this panel. Thank you for listening to the panel. And please join the other debates. Thank you. Goodbye.